Am I the a-hole for choosing my stepmom over my biological mom? I'm 24 female and I just bought a new house. My dad and stepmom contributed too for the house and it looks perfect. My mom left me and my dad when I was five because my dad couldn't earn much. A year later, he remarried to my stepmom, Jane. She wasn't what I thought stepmoms would be. She was kind of really talented. I don't have other siblings or stepsisters, so she basically raised me as her own daughter. She helped through everything, financially too. My biological mom, Karen, came for me when I was 16. I had grown a hatred for her as she abandoned me, but she still was invited to events like my birthday or Christmas. She also has a stepdaughter a few years younger than me. So when I bought a new house, I expected my stepmom to move in with me, as it was closer to the hospital she has to go every three months, diabetes. Before I could move in, my mom asked me how many rooms were there. I told her how many were there, and she said she and her stepdaughter would move in a week later to choose the rooms. I told her no, as Jane was moving in with me, and it caused a big argument between us. She included Jane and my dad, and said how Jane brainwashed me and created chaos between mother and daughter. She yelled at me for being raised pathetically and said, I gave birth to you, so you owe me a lot. Her stepdaughter called me too and said I was being a witch for not giving her a place to stay. Jane and I moved in three days ago, but we still get calls from them telling me to kick Jane out or Karen won't see me again. I don't think I am, but am I the a-hole? Edit. Why the r slash want to move in my house? 1. Jane has diabetes appointment every three months, and my dad's place is nearly a two-hour flight plus hotel. Living with me can reduce the cost. 2. Karen's stepdaughter wants to live in the city and in my house, so as family we don't have to pay each other. She's broken jobless, and Karen wants to stay so she can supervise me. 3. My dad isn't involved because he is a peacekeeper. He doesn't get angry quick and avoid doing things that makes him regret later. Now for the top comments. Not a day home. What kind of adult invites themselves into someone else's home? That's weird on the surface and more so given your history. You decided to help your stepmom, so tell this other lady that she's not welcome to live there. But hey, bio mom said that if Opie doesn't kick out Jane, Opie wouldn't see Karen again. Like, where's the downside here? Sometimes the trash takes itself out. She said she and her stepdaughter would move in a week later to choose the rooms. Not day hall and she can piss off. Why does she think she can move into a place she did not pay for at all and was not invited? Also, why does your dad react like this? He is the type of person who would stay calm and won't let anger take over. Not day hall. Your stepmom is clearly more of a mother to you than your birth mother. Also, your birth mother's logic is flawed. She may have brought you into this world, but that was her choice and not yours. And when you bring a child into this world, you then have a responsibility to take care of them. And she did not fulfill that responsibility. Your stepmom, however, did raise you. So it's perfectly fair you'd want her to move in with you instead of the egg donor. Next story. Am I the a-hole for selling my house to get away from my sister? I took in my pregnant sister when she was almost homeless. Kicked out by her boyfriend, father of the baby. We weren't close, but I let her into my home because I didn't want my nephew to be homeless. The agreement was I took her in for three months and she would find a job and find a place to live in that time. Almost a year later, she hasn't left, and I'm stuck paying for her and her son. Even worse, she recently got back together with a boyfriend that kicked her out, but hasn't forced him to pay any child support, so I'm paying for everything. He is a stinky, disgusting a-hole who I banned from the house, but my sister keeps sneaking him in when I'm out. I can't afford it as I have a good job, but I'm sick of her mooching off me when she could find a job but hasn't even sent out a single resume. She has had depression in the past that is probably depressed now, and so she begged our mom to speak to me in her behalf, who keeps telling me when I let her into my home, I signed an obligation for life to take care of her son. I'm also single without children, so in her eyes, I don't have any obligations now but to take care of her grandson. I've been looking for a better job for a while and I just found one. It's a work from home job, but I can't imagine working with my sister around. So I told her I'm selling the house and moving states and she has two months to move out. Now all I'm getting is phone calls from my mother and other family members who know they have to take care of my sister if I leave, begging me to keep taking care of her. She's screaming at me for leaving her on the streets, but I can't wait for February to come early enough. But I feel kind of guilty looking at my nephew who is going to suffer because both of his crappy parents 
It probably is going to end up like them. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Tell your mom to take your sister in then. Also, you said the agreement was three months. Where the heck did your mom pull that for life out of? Her butt? Well, shove it back where it comes from. There is only so much you can help until it starts to affect you. Doesn't matter if it's mental slash physical slash financial. Protect yourself before you try to help others. Yep. Hey mom, when you gave birth to sister, you took an obligation for life. I think parents forget they're still parents even after the child turned 18. Not today, home. Your mom can take them in if she feels so strongly. You're not your sister's parent. Housing them for a few months is not an obligation for life. Block your mom and enjoy your new place. Not today, home. Your nephew has parents and grandparents and many others who can step in and help. You telling your sister she can stay with you for a couple of months isn't a lifetime obligation to pay for her and her child. They have rights because they are living there, but you're under no obligation to allow that to continue. Telling the house seems extreme, unless that's something you want to do regardless, but you should absolutely talk to a lawyer and begin eviction proceedings. Your sister is an adult. It needs to take responsibility for her actions and her child. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for yelling at my mom that I hate Harry Potter and to let me live my own life? As my title suggests, my mom is a huge Harry Potter nut. She and my dad actually met in Harry Potter IRC, like Discord but for old people, in the early 2000s. Got married, had kids, and from day one decided to embarrass us for life by naming us after some Harry Potter and Star Wars characters. It's honestly been hell. I have a stupid name, and since we were little, my parents have forced stuff like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Marvel movies, etc, etc down our throats. Everything is about dragons and magic and blah blah blah. I'm so sick of it. Every birthday, every holiday, everything is just organized around fandom. So just like every Christmas, the days leading up to Christmas we have to sit down every night and watch Harry Potter movies. It's so freaking boring. I can usually get away with knitting or drawing on my iPad during this, but this year my mom was like, let's just have a technology and distraction free every night. I arranged to go over to my friend Missy's house instead for like two nights. Missy's family is normal and likes things a normal amount. But my mom got really mad and started talking about how it's a family tradition and how I'm basically rejecting her and went on her whole thing about how you wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Harry Potter. I finally had it and just yelled, nobody cares that you were a big named Harry Potter fan club. I don't like Harry Potter. I don't like Star Wars. I hate Marvel movies. They're all so boring. So please just let me have my own interests. I couldn't help it. I started crying because I was just so frustrated because everything always has to be about Harry Potter this, Star Wars that. And now that we're all older, they started doing Game of Thrones. Everything is centered around some kind of movie or TV show or book series. Just once, I want my family to bond around something that doesn't have to do with media or these nerdy things. We live in Utah where we have like five national parks. And even though I ask every year for my birthday, I've never been to Arches. Well, my sister called me saying that mom was angry and to just come home and to stop with the theatrics. I told her that I'm sick of having all this old nerd stuff crammed down my throat and just once I want to have a normal time, watching normal Christmas movies and not having a pause for lightsaber battles. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole and your post is a great warning for all those people still thinking about naming their kid Anakin or Khaleesi. You're allowed to have your own interests and your parents aren't making life easier by forcing things they like on you. Not the a-hole, but that IRC comment cut me to the core and now I feel old. The sheer psychic damage reading that line KO'd me where I sat. As a huge Harry Potter fan myself, you are not day home. You have to be able to grow up and have your own interests. Do you think your parents would be open to family therapy? This. I have a few fandoms I'm into. Harry Potter being one, Supernatural being another. I will definitely buy all of the things when I see it, but I don't push it on my daughter. Although she does know about my interests and will point out things she sees that I would like. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not telling my estranged extended family when I got a new phone number and ruining their Christmas? So here's a little backstory. 
Either the sixth female haven't been in contact with my extended family in years. Not for lack of trying. But when I did use to reach out, I was either ignored or blown off as an annoyance. Well, I got a new number last year. And it's been so long they never crossed my mind to inform. Suddenly now, some of these extendeds decided to finally reach out. And upon me not immediately answering their calls and texts, decided to lose their flipping minds. I'm currently out of state and yesterday evening I got a frantic call from my husband, saying some of my family members showed up at our house and left a note on our door while he was out. One of our neighbors came over and told him they wandered all over the outside of our house banging on the windows and quickly left when she came out to question them. The note they left was ridiculously long, but to summarize, there was a family emergency and how I had better call them ASAP. My husband tried to call and text them before calling me, but they hung up on him when he said he was my husband. So, I ended up calling to see what the hell was going on. The second I answered, my family lit into me calling me every name in the book. Finally, when I was able to get a word in and ask what the emergency was, I almost had a conniption. This grand emergency was the day before one of my uncles texted my old number that I was to come to his house for Christmas and that he would take no excuses. He texted this at 4 a.m. And when I didn't answer, he sent a barrage of texts, telling me I had no choice and that my cousins would come get me the following day whether I like it or not. Amazing colorful language about what I'm doing with my spare time was included. With no immediate answer to that, he apparently called everyone and had the mask call and text my old number because I was obviously just being a witch and ignoring them. Well, apparently the person that now has my old number didn't like that everyone in their left sock was blowing up their phone. Apparently, they contacted several of the family members and they would be contacting the police about this harassment. I told them they brought it on themselves because of their extreme overreaction. They tried to talk over me. But I cut them off pointing out their lack of communication for all these years was okay, but no reply from me at the crack of the morning is unacceptable apparently. They then told me I was a selfish witch that ruined their Christmas. I ended it soon after that and called my husband to fill him in on everything. He was understandably pissed as well. I planned to call my old number in the morning and apologize to them for the trouble and possibly get copies of the text to get a restraining order when I return home. I'm so upset and utterly enraged by this behavior from them, and I don't think I am, but I do have to ask, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You should probably change your number again now. This. These people sound terrible. Definitely not the a-hole. I have a question though. Is there no one on that side of the family who knows how to reach you? Isn't there a parent or a sibling these wackos could have called and said, I hope he didn't return my text. Is she okay? If you do and they still acted this way, I have no words. The fact that they want this level of crazy means they probably burned more than a few bridges that lead to OP. Not they home, and do not delay on that restraining order. It is very strange that they would come to your house and knock when no one is there, peep through the windows, but leave as soon as they saw the neighbor. Something is very fishy there. Were you due for kind of inheritance from an older relative? It's possible that there's been a death in the family that you are not aware of. They might be trying to attempt to force you out of it by getting you alone. This is what I think. What, after all these years, would make them this desperate to see Opie again? Money would be one of my first guesses. Opie, you need to find out if a relative has recently died, or if you're the recipient of some sort of bequest. Given all these people's wacko behavior, I can see someone deciding to leave everything to the only sane person in the family. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for ordering meals for my children when we go out with friends? My husband and I have two children, 19 and 17. We go out with our friends, two other couples, every other week and then on the weeks we do not go out with them, we have a date night and then a family dinner out. We always get separate checks, so each couple pays for their own food slash drinks. We find it is just easier to do it that way. On the weeks that we do not take the kids, or ask if they can come in a 19-year-old's case since they work, we always have them look at the menu to see if they want us to order them something and bring it home. We have been doing this for the last five years since the kids were old enough to not need a babysitter, and it has never been an issue, until now. The only time we do not order them anything is when we have plans after dinner, such as a concert or movie. A new couple joined our group for dinner. They are friends of another couple we go out with, and we had never met them prior to Saturday night. 
We decided on sushi for dinner. So we showed both kids the menu online and asked if they wanted us to pick them up something to bring home. They each decided on two rolls. At the end of our meal, my husband ordered the rolls for the kids and let the server know that they were for takeout and to put them on our check. The wife of the new couple got a little huffy and told us that it was rude for us to order more food when everyone was getting ready to leave and basically said it was trashy of us to get doggy bags for our kids when none of the other couples had. My husband told her that we do this all the time and that if they wanted to leave, nothing is stopping them from doing that. The next day, I got a text from my friend saying that this new couple did not enjoy going out with us and that we embarrassed them, the new couple but not our friends, at the restaurant by ordering takeout food for our children. I asked my friend if she had a problem with us doing that as they had never said anything to us before. And she said no, but she does not want fighting within the group. So she asked that we not order takeout anymore for the kids if this other couple was going to be dining with us. I told my friend that it was rude to ask us not to do this, especially considering that we have always done it without issue, and that maybe we just did not need to go with them when they dined with this other couple since they did not like being around us. So are we the a-holes? That new couple should just mind their own business. You getting takeout has nothing to do with them. I can't even imagine what kind of alternate reality they live in to think that it would be trashy. Not stay home. Agreed. I think the couple felt embarrassed that they weren't also taking something home for their kids and that they were made to look trashy. Ridiculous. You should be able to go out with grown adults and not all do the same thing. The only thing trashy would have been to order for the kids and put it in one bill that was split between everyone. This overreaction is so strange, including their old friends not wanting them to do it either. That I wonder if Opie is not telling the truth about how they split checks. The story would make sense if they equally split a single check. I think we're just in a strange time where no one is allowed to do anything if it upsets even one person's feelings, even if said person is overreacting and being ridiculous.